right, we're going through. We're doing our pre-trip now. I just tire shine the tires because why not? I do need to give, I want to give this trailer a bath at some point. It definitely needs it, but we're going to be going over this thing. Um, tire pressure seemed to be all right. I just went through uh, earlier and uh, checked them and that seems unfortunately normal. So I'm going to run it. This one's going to get replaced eventually and I'm going to pull the one from the front up there and put it here and then I'm going to put the brand new one up front there and then we'll start rotating them normally. I do need to order the set of 14 plies for the 16. So I'm going to do them two at a time. Like I said, no, I'm not going to go through and just replace them all. I know you guys recommended it, but financially it just doesn't make sense i have four brand new tires like this is a brand new tire so i just need to get i want to get this front one swapped out at some point and then i'm going to put this front one over in the middle on the other side like i just said and we'll go from there but unless somebody wants to buy me all eight new tires i don't really financially i don't really want to do that right now if i didn't have that stupid payment coming up in december i probably would go that route and just order all new stuff for this thing. Also, I've been going every now and again, and uh, when I stop, I like to kick the center caps to make sure that they're actually on there really good, because I understand that's a problem that a lot of you guys have is losing the center caps. And honestly, for a hundred, that back cap right there being $150, is enough for me to want to check them every now and again stupid expensive these are 45 a piece so it's like if you take 90 and 300 it's 400 dollars for all four covers absolutely crazy but that's gonna about do it i got the edge working again i'll have the new cord uh next week when i get home so like i said anybody wants to trade for an instrument cluster everything works on this let me click no, okay, so the touchscreen, like, it, it recognizes that you touch it, but you just can't use the touchscreen feature. That's all that's wrong with it. It was an $850 system. I'm gonna be replacing the cords. The only thing it needs is to be sent in and have the screen repaired, but I can't do that because I rely on it to check my gauges while my instrument cluster doesn't work. So, if anybody wants it, let me know. Zero to 64 in 1.8 miles. <laughs> feel like I'm back to normal. We got the shades back up. We got these guys back up. I got pizza for breakfast. I got some Middlesworth chips. You can't have a road trip without Middlesworth chips and some Swiss tea. That's how I see it. Oh man, we got 11 and a half hours till we get there. Obviously not going to be dropping today, but you know, it's not a big deal. All right, so this is a new route. I haven't really explained this uh, as well as I could have yesterday. I'm going to Niceville, Florida. I've said that a million times now. The problem with Niceville, Florida is that I don't actually do that area. You guys can see I'm on 85 South. I run 95 straight down until I get into Florida and then I do not go outside of 95 or 75. I stay in between those two. So Niceville, I believe it's like, I, I think it's I-10, but I could, I could be wrong, but I don't do that part of Florida. I only do Pennsylvania, New Jersey to I-95 or 75 in Florida. So like Tampa down and all the way down to Miami on 95, nowhere outside of that. Like it's just, I'll do that whole long section of Florida, any of that, I don't do it. So I've been having a lot of guys will ask me, hey, can you do this load out of this area? And chances are good I won't. Um, I strictly do three down, three back. I will not go outside of that. I won't go to Tennessee. I won't go to Minnesota, any Wisconsin. I won't go to Maine anymore. Um, New York, anything that I have to go through New York, I will not do. Just keep that in mind if you ever need loads moved, cars, any of that. Just know that I will not go outside of either 81 through Virginia down to 95 or outside of 75 85 through florida and i every six days i'm home so i try to strategically place myself so that it takes me three days to get down three days to get back that's why i do it that way i will not do anything out of my area i just i won't anymore so it also kind of screws me if i try to take like say i need to go over to tennessee well now that i drop something in tennessee a halfway mark out of my area now i have to pick something else up and it's like, then it, then we're getting into seven days, eight days, nine days to, to do this run. And I just, I don't want to do that. I try to make as much money as possible in six days and be home. So I do usually about 70 miles an hour the whole way down. And people will tell you, don't
don't run 70 miles an hour, oh, it's so bad, this and that. No, the reason I can do it in this amount, I have six days to do it, I'm gonna make the same amount of money. Regardless if I do 60 and it takes me seven days, or I do it in six days and it, it, I do 70 miles an hour. It's just how I run, it's my style, and I'm home. There you go, there's your uh, public service announcement for the guys that need me to move stuff for them. Uh, strictly New Jersey, PA, Florida. So, or back. This dude back there in the red truck. His trailer says, do not pass on the right. It has an arrow pointing on the right. But yet, he'll sit in the passing lane because right here in this specific spot, it says no trucks or trailers or buses in the left two lanes or commercial vehicles or whatever. And of course, he's sitting in the left of the right two lanes. So yeah, you have to pass him on the right. It's like, the guy won't move over. Look at him, he's still sitting back there in that lane. Come on, buddy, where you get your CDL from? The Fruit Loops box? I wish I could get mine that easily. I, it looks like I might be staying home a little bit longer next week. I have a dentist appointment on the 22nd. So, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing, but I'm gonna try to get caught up on a bunch of stuff, maybe take a little bit of time off just to get through that, um, and then probably head out on the 23rd. Man, that's gonna be, wow, that's yeah, that's gonna throw off the paycheck. For, I might not get any uh, get any pay the following week. So this will be fun, then I'm gonna have to come back and hit it hard to make up for it. All right, so this thing's been relatively problem-free for quite a while now. So, just, uh, that goes to prove old trucks don't make good money. So I do need, I just checked out that tire over there, right? And uh, it's still pretty, I don't know, it's getting pretty bad. So I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Um, I'm not gonna do it here, I'm not gonna do it now, but I definitely want, I definitely wanna swap these out. I might do it tonight, I might do it tomorrow. I might even just wait until everything's off the trailer to do it, to tell you the truth. We keep having GoPro issues, so I'm probably gonna have to end up going through and uh, Getting, uh, getting a new camera at some point. I don't know what, what recorded and what didn't, so this tire is still doing its thing. Um, it looks like it's chopping this way. So not sure what's going on here, but like uh, like I was trying to explain earlier, I'm gonna go and take, probably not tonight or tomorrow, um, I'm gonna take that tire, swap everything around, probably end up throwing that one as a spare i'm just gonna let that one do its thing for the rest of the day and then take and throw a spare but you guys can see even with 8,000 pounds of tongue weight it was like 80 20 or something like that now i did go through a little bit of fuel so that might have uh, played a factor but the truck's sitting basically as level as possible maybe squatting about an inch so with 8,000 pounds of tongue weight on a reverse level truck mind you there is no overload there's no overload at all and I have 100 pounds in it. So I wanna try 7,000 pounds and see if I can't let it sit level because I think 7,000 might be perfect. If I had overloads and factory suspension, I probably wouldn't need to put much air in it at all and it would actually take this just fine. But we're learning, we're experimenting, we're getting there. Fifth wheel's doing all right. Haven't had any issues with that yet. But I do need to grab and go throw some grease in the axles so we'll go do that now get this over with real quick all right i just went through and greased every one of them i wanted to do it now while it's hot but that center one is kind of concerning i don't know what's going on with it it does look a little milkshakey on the inside so i'm definitely going to check that out right now so grab some wood grab some jacks i got it up on the wood and i'm going to throw my bottle jack underneath of it Try to get it jacked up as high as I can get it. And I just want to get this wheel off the ground, in other words, so I can see, I want to see if there's any play in the bearing. And if there is, shit. Hopefully there's not, but if there is, well, this, this kind of sucks. So, I haven't had any truck issues in a long time. So, that thing's gonna be getting uh, some work done to it here. In the next couple weeks, I have some plans for it. But as of now, working on a trailer. All right, there's a little bit of play, but not a lot. So, I don't know what to do here. Oh man, I don't know. I'm gonna start, I guess, messing with the bearing because it has, it's such a light amount 
I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I worry about it or shouldn't I? It's like ever so slight, but I don't know, it's making, there is some noise. I don't know. Let's start tearing it apart and see what comes out. I think we're gonna need a seal because there's a uh, there's some water coming out of there. Wow! All right, let's get this thing torn apart. See if uh, see if everything's salvageable, and we'll go from there. Realistically, I want to say that this one was just a wee bit loose. Um, I'm hoping that's all that it is, and I can put a little bit more tension on it. But let's see. Start putting our parts. I don't want to put them on the ground. I'm gonna put them in there. I do smell something burnt. Let's see. Oh, there's. Oh, yeah. We need a bearing. Wow. Yeah. We need a. We definitely need a bearing. There is a lot of play in there. I mean, it's still usable, but I don't want to be going down the, yeah, that's, oof. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this thing is like falling out of itself. I mean, it still spins fine, but I'm gonna go uh, as soon as possible and get some new bearings. I'm gonna go grab some towels, I'll be back. So now I get it, I should be doing this stuff at home, right? But as I explained before, I said, look, I have six days that I come down on the road, okay? Three days down, three days back. One way or another, so after the first day, I've already picked up my three. On the second day, I have all day to drive, which gives me 11 hours of drive time and three hours of time to do whatever, okay? So in that three hours of time to do whatever, breakdowns, I would rather do this here, obviously not on the side of the road, but I'd rather do a breakdown here or like fix something here than do it you know, when I'm home, when I could be spending time with my family. Not to mention, you guys don't watch as much when I don't break down, so I haven't had any truck breakdowns lately. So even though views are at a record high, um, I, I got like 407,000 views this month, but that was because one of my videos got 150,000 views, which was just absolutely insane. But at the same time, it's like, look, no breakdown means not as many views. So being that YouTube is a decent source of income, uh, I'll do this stuff on the side of the, or on the side. I, it doesn't bother me. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to screw this axle up. All right. So yeah, let's start getting this thing pulled off and see what it looks like. So first initial thought, everything looks, everything looks all right. Like there's no scoring or anything like that on here. So super happy with that. Super happy that the, this works. And we haven't broken any magnet on this one yet, so. I think that's all right. You guys let me, oh, there we go. Okay, I see. Oh, I see. okay. I was always wondering how these things work. Okay, that's kind of neat, okay. Cool. So yeah, okay, so we have, at least we know that this one's good. So I'm gonna have to go through and do all the other ones. I guess now's the time to get all, get all the parts ordered. All right, so the inner bearing spins fine. There's not really any, not really any play in there, which is good. I just want to mainly get most of the moisture out. So as long as I can get all the moisture out, we should be all right. Spray a ton of grease in there and whatnot and go from there. So let me grab the grease gun. We'll get all this sorted away, cleaned up. You guys let me know if that's normal. I don't think that's normal, but I haven't really done trailer brakes in a while. There's like, you know, a good bit of play there, but it still spins all right. So obviously I'm gonna still replace it anyway when I get the chance, but for now I think it's all right. I'm gonna order a set of eight bearings in the meantime, but like you guys can see like the chocolate milk shit in there. Glad that I caught this one I did. All right, she is all back together. There we go. And I think we're good, I think, I think we're good. I don't want to be losing any bearings, but it's tight, but not, you know, basically the same way I do that. 
So I got it tight and then I kicked it off one notch. Let's get the tire back on and check it out. All right, believe it or not, yes, I decided to do it. Say screw it and you know, there you go. Brand new tire, brand new tire, brand used tire. Now we go to the other side, okay? There's the tire I took off. The one that has like the stupid wear mark. So that tire, brand new. That tire, brand new. This tire, brand used. So this guy is uh, on his way out and I'll make the order. Now, if I have a blowout, I'll have a spare, but when I get home, I will, uh, I'll be ordering tires and we'll go from there. I'll probably just, I'm gonna order two at a time because I don't really wanna have, I, like I said yesterday's video, I don't exactly have the budget to be replacing all of them right now. So it's just not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna replace one, two, replace two, and then I'm gonna grab eight, two, well, four sets of bearings. So eight bearings and it seems like the brakes are all right. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go over everything when I get home, repack everything. Maybe I won't order all the bear. Maybe I'll order two sets. I don't know. We'll see. Let's get this thing impacted on. So I came over here and I checked this guy over here. The first one, I checked this one here and it seems like it has the same amount of play. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that that's all right. Um, you guys let me know down in the comments. I do understand that you can't get these things perfect because there's a quarter inch between every notch. So it's like you'll get it really tight and then you'll back it off and there will be a little bit of play. So I understand that. Hopefully that's all right. We'll go from there. But everything's greased. Everything's gone over. I've been here probably about an hour now. So not super bad. But it's like we don't have truck problems now. Now we have trailer problems. So let's refurbish this thing and go over everything and make sure everything's good. Then we won't have problems anymore. I hate that wheel though. That definitely needs to get sprayed black or something. Or someone send me links to uh, to wheel covers for these. Like, because you guys can see on the truck, the truck looks great. Loving the look of it, you know, with the wheel covers and all that. Send me some stuff for the, the wheels on the trailer itself. I also went through, um, you'll notice down in the description, as of today, I have deleted my Facebook page and my business page for Facebook. So all that's gone. The only way to get a contact of me now is Instagram or Snapchat, which are down below. But yeah, Facebook gone. I'm, I, I, I've hated Facebook for a while. So it's finally like relieving, but it does suck that I can't, you know, talk to you guys on there. But at the same time, it's like, I still have Messenger, but I don't think you'll be able to, if you're not friends with me already, I don't think you'll be able to do it. So send me some links in Instagram. Thank you. Well, I don't know if that helps. There's definitely a piece of metal in there kind of bored and I want to see if I can't get that out just for oh look there's a second one wow yeah can't wait to get 14 plies they don't puncture as e easily it's weird being drama free for a while guys let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a video on the trailer of everything I like and hate about it all right so I came over here to the uh, flying day because I wanted to get some food before the end of my shift and you guys see, I did just put the, the new tire on it, the, the brand used, and it's already wearing weird. So you guys can see like something is definitely not right with this center, and I don't know what it is. No idea. I went through, I checked uh, all of the equalizers and all of the nuts and bolts, and I can't figure it out. So unless it's a bearing issue, but these tires are pretty much, I'm gonna be getting them replaced anyway, so I'm not super worried about it. But in the meantime, I guess we'll just run it. There's the other one there, you can see it. It definitely chewed a number out of that side. Like it's wearing it down the whole thing, not just the edge. So I don't know, I'm not gonna be super concerned about it right now. All right, end of the day. We're on our way to a Loves. So going over the load now and not too bad. Nothing's moved, obviously. Car hauler, nothing really ever moves. These straps usually hold on pretty damn well. This tire definitely noticeable that it's uh, wearing pretty bad. End up replacing the bearings on it. We are well into the grass. And this is some deep grass. Glad there's no pole back there so the car won't hit it. But yeah, this uh, this kind of sucks. I don't I don't know what that is. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I definitely think it's gonna be time for a wheel bearing. I'm wondering if we don't have a bent axle or something either, because I mean, who knows, maybe, maybe I hit something on this side and it, you know, shoved the axle under, I don't know. 
but it's just weird that it's wearing the way that it is unless it's like turned in or find out like i said let me know what you think I hope you guys enjoyed see you in the next one safe travels have a good one